Have you ever said to yourself, I just can't deal with this? Or I just can't deal with this right now? Like, it seems like in your mind or in reality, both are the same, really. It feels the same. Uh, that everything just comes at you all at once. Like, you got to do this thing at work. You got responsibilities here. You got responsibilities with the home. Uh, something's happening with your parents or siblings or friends, your relationships. Uh, there's an argument here. There's something you got to deal with here. Uh, there's bills that haven't been paid here. You know, there's this that you have to take care of, but you've been procrastinating. And then all of a sudden, you get reminded of it all. You get reminded of it all. And somehow, you ask yourself, like, how, how am I supposed to deal with that? How am I supposed to deal with all of this? It's at 100%. How can I bring it down to zero? And what I do my best to do is as a mindfulness teacher and someone who comes on and we kind of have a chill talk here is can you realize and take a step back of of how much of that is in your mind everything that's going on is are these cyclical patterns of thinking is projecting into the future putting yourself in these scenarios it, it may be hurting you you're not hurting anybody else they're in your imagination. You, your friend doesn't know what you're thinking about the scenario or your boss doesn't know what you're thinking about the future scenario or something like that. But you do. And you know it all. And you know if it's hurting you or not. And some of the time it is. And we're unable to deal with it and it all comes at once and we try to figure it all out. And what I'm going to play you here is what do you do when you're down in the dumps and not ready to deal? Just real quick. Let me move this. down in the dumps and not ready to deal decide what it is that you need is it money or love is it learning to live or is it the mouth you must feed be always a man who will always be candid on questions that do not relate And I can't play the verse be or the chorus because that's going to be a whole other video. If you know that song, come over for tea and we'll talk. So listen to what that was when you're down in the dumps and not ready to, ready to deal. Decide what it is that you need. Now this is massive. This is what self-compassion is. It's in the moment if it's available to me. What do I need? And when we people please and we think of everybody else's needs before ours, we don't give ourselves what we need. If we're having a panic attack, if we're feeling a shit, if we're tired, whatever it is, we're not giving ourselves a break. We're only giving ourselves a break once everybody else's perceived needs are met. Like we have an idea of exactly what we need and we're going to give them that. And then once the guests leave the house, physically, mentally, then we can rest then we can give ourselves a little downtime. Then we can do something we enjoy. Self-compassion is, is it available to me to give myself what I need? What do I need right now? To feel safe and to feel secure. Done. What do I need to feel safe and secure right now? And then you say at the other end of this video, Scott, I don't deserve to give myself what I need. That's like so selfish. If I feel guilty when I give myself what I need. I know. Like, what do you mean? I'm in the middle of something and then I just feel tired and I just got to have a lie down. You know, some of you have written me and deal with chronic pain and things like that. And it's like, you know, you still push yourself so hard. And it's like, I feel guilty if I just got to take a nap. I feel guilty if I just got to uh, gotta take medication. I feel guilty if, if I got to take a lie down and watch TV for a bit. And I wonder where that guilt comes from and if that guilt 
is your friend. If that voice is your friend. If you've identified with that voice so much that it's become so intertwined with other parts of you that you can't tell which is you and well, which is you. Which one's your friend and which ones you need space for. So if you really listen, where's that voice come from? And what's it trying to get you to do? What's it trying to get you to feel? What's it trying to get you to avoid? Is it really helping you? The one that says don't rest. The one that says take care of other people's needs. The one that says you don't deserve this right now. The one that says you're lazy, what the fuck you doing? The inner critic we talk about a lot and the antidote is this piece of self-compassion. Self-compassion is the foundation or, or encircles all other mental health tools. All other mental health tools. Cognitive behavioral therapy. You give yourself a hot thought or a hard thought and the hard thought is nobody likes you. That's your hard thought. And then you know you, you switch into, okay, what are alternative ways of thinking? How do I feel? How does this change how I behave? That's cognitive behavioral therapy, okay? Well, if there's no self-compassion, the moment you put down your hard thought, nobody likes me, the, the lack of self-compassion will be like, yeah, you fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, you are a loser. Yeah, yeah. And then you really have to do the work. But if there's no self-compassion, man, oh man, it gets hard to dig in. It gets, it, it's really hard to dig through that. And when you're changing these thoughts, people think that it's so easy to solve a problem in mental health. It's so easy to solve a problem. We have all this literature about cognitive behavioral therapy, but what I've been learning is it's not an exact science for sure of how it works and why it works. And, you know, is it working because there's a better relationship with peers if you're doing it as a group? Is it the relationship between you and a therapist that's really working? Is it because you have a task and a mission and structure to do every day because you're doing these worksheets? It's all kinds of things, right? But if there's no self-compassion in that and you're just changing a thought, it's like saying an affirmation that you don't believe. You know, looking into the camera right now, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. It's like me admitting I can play a really difficult solo. I can play every Kirk Hammett solo. I can play every Kirk Hammett solo. Okay. You know what's a lie. To work on self-compassion, and in this case, give yourself exactly what you need. Now let's go through the song again. When you're down in the dumps and not ready to deal, decide what it is that you need. Is it money or love? Is it learning to live? Or is it the mouth you must feed? Is it money or love? Is it learning to live or is it the mouth you must feed? Listen to that. And what you need right now, is it physical? Is it spiritual? Is it psychological? Is it emotional? So do you need, well, we all need money. But do you need something where is it money or love? Do you need to reach out to somebody? Do you need to tell somebody how you're feeling? Or is it a critical situation where it's just like, not critical. Is it a, a situation that you find yourself in where it's just like, I just need to eat. And the best thing I can do for myself is just eat. Trust me, I know the feeling. There's a million things to do. I can't deal with everything all at once. It's all coming down on me. When you're down in the dumps and not ready to deal, decide what it is that you need. Okay, I can't solve everything at this moment, but I need to eat. And eating will be very good for me. Eating is good for my body. Eating is good for my cells in my body. Eating will be good for my brain. Eating will be good because if I need to cook, then I can cut carrots very slowly. I can tear the lettuce very slowly cook the chicken thighs very slowly. I can pepper and salt things very mindfully and uh, there's no rush to it. I'm just going to make myself a meal. And then what happens is when we accomplish something like that and when we give ourselves what we need, there's obviously neurochemical reactions and this, um, this dopamine pathway and the um, 
substantia nigra pathway, actually. I didn't say the right word. You, I didn't say the word you're thinking. And, um, and you, you not only begin to feel a sense of, of pride and accomplishment, but at the same time, you're giving yourself what you need. You listen to a self-compassionate voice within you. And this is a training. This work in the self-compassionate muscle. Right? If I, I, you know, I, 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 I consider myself a very slightly below average guitar player, to be honest. And, you know, I know chords and I'm way better at playing metal. But if I just get, got to the guitar and practiced once, and I'm like, ah, it doesn't work. If you just tried self compassion, this thing, give myself what I need, kid, just once. Do this thing Scott said. I'll just do it once. I'll cook myself. Okay, did it work? Yeah, but the next day I didn't feel that great. I guess it doesn't work. No, this is like a muscle. You got to go back. You got to get your fingers a little, a little callous. You got to bleed a little bit. I wonder. If you give yourself what you need and if you can really settle in to this idea, entertain yourself for a little bit with this idea of self-compassion and how would your life change if you were more kind to yourself? How would your life change if you gave yourself what you need and stopped putting others first all the time? How would your life change if, you know, if you just let go of people's expectations and perceptions of you just a little bit? Not all, not ever, not all the way, but just a little bit. Let go of them just enough so it gives you enough space to give yourself what you need. I wonder how your life would change. This eight week thing I'm putting together where you get to chill with me for eight weeks every single weekend or when we decide to meet as a group uh, this is all going to be around self-compassion self-compassion again is the foundation helps you with how to deal with anxiety helps you with um, feelings of depression helps you with self-criticism helps you with you know chronic pain this idea and this sense of self-compassion means Physically, you're comfortable in your own body. You're comfortable in your own skin. Like it changes the way we see our bodies. You know this negative body image, this body standard that we have. Why we're not satisfied with who we are, what we are, how we look, how we act. And of course, that's not to say that we don't need to change. But we're not going to stem from "I need to change" out in the future somewhere. We need to. We the change needs to stem from the soil that we're in right now. And you're going to get a way better flower that comes out from self-compassion. You know, the studies with, uh, with plants and they grow like to classical music and you touch them and, you know, you, you really love for them. They grow better. So if you can grow your flower, I mean growing yourself from a, a soil and a root of self-compassion, man, it's going to blossom. You're going to be all bright and shit. <laughs> you're going to be all nice. And then people are going to pick you. Because you're a beautiful flower. I'm going to stay out here a bit and uh, just well, do my meditation practice. And I'll see you all next week. And all the links are in the description thing, you know. The uh, therapy link. Because I've seen a lot of comments and I can only help you so much, on a, you know, on a one-way convo. When you ask yourself, if I gave myself really what I needed, what would it be to make me feel safe and secure? A lot of the answers out there are therapy. AKA, talking to someone about how you're feeling and working through it together. 
I think a lot of the time we think of therapy as like someone against us, like someone, you know, uh, poking at us, prodding at us, like, oh, what do you think that's about? Oh my gosh, is that your childhood? Oh, so that happened to you? Oh my God. It's someone who's on your team. Don't you want a teammate to help you work through stuff? So anyways, the, the cheap therapy stuff is in the, the link below. I've used it and uh, check that out. All the things to sign up for. And I hope you all have a great week. Take care of yourself. Self-compassion is number one. Give yourself what you need. If it's money or love, if it's learning to live, or if it's the mouth you must feed. Bye-bye.